Hey everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I wanted to give you some advice and tips for conducting and developing stay interviews, which seems to be a very hot topic right now since we are trying to avoid turnover and retain as many staff as possible. So what you wanna do is set clear objectives for your stay interviews. What I mean by this is, define the purpose of the interview and communicate this purpose with the employee who you're interviewing in advance. The main objectives might include something like identifying factors that drive employee engagement with that employee or with their coworkers, uncovering any potential issues that may be a concern that the company should know about so that we can get more people to stay and exploring growth opportunities for that individual or if they're a manager, maybe the individuals on their team. Number two with stay interviews, make sure you choose the right participants. Aim to conduct stay interviews with a diverse group of employees. You don't have to do stay interviews with every single employee and you don't have to do stay interviews only with people who are struggling, but you should do them with people who might be struggling as well as really high performers. This will get you a more comprehensive understanding of the factors that impact retention across different roles and departments. Number three, make sure once you have chosen the right participants and figured out your clear objectives that you schedule these interviews in advance and at the right time, meaning find a time that's suitable both for you, the interviewer, and the employee ensuring there's no uh, you know, emergencies that are happening or deadlines that they're butting up against. And there's no distractions so that you can have a quality conversation during this stay interview. Number four, make sure that you create a comfortable environment. It is awkward. The stay interview is awkward. Hi, employee, why are you still here? So you need to make sure that it is in a quiet, private setting where everybody involved feels comfortable that they can speak openly and as honestly as possible within reasons, right? So establishing trust and respect, respect is so, so important. And make sure that no matter what they say to you, that you, you keep that in confidence of who said it and that you're non-judgmental towards them. Number five, super, super important, prepare. Prepare the questions that you're going to ask in advance. Develop open-ended questions, so not yes-no questions. Open-ended questions that encourage the employee that you're speaking to to share their thoughts and feelings about their work experience. Some examples might include, you know, what do you enjoy most about your job here? What motivates you to stay with this organization? What aspects of your work do you find most challenging? On the other side, what aspects of your work do you find most frustrating? Are there any areas where you could use more support? Are there any areas where you can use more resources? And do you know what those resources are? What opportunities for growth and development would you like to see in the future? Or if they're a supervisor or a manager, maybe what your employees have told you they'd like to see. Number six, be an active listener. Listen carefully to the employee's responses. Ask follow-up questions. Try not to have just yes, no. Make sure you're listening and let them do the talking. Take notes and let them know that you're taking notes so they don't think you're distracted with something else. Avoid interrupting them or jumping to conclusions. We all like to do that. Show empathy and understanding when discussing any challenges or frustrations that they bring up. Number seven, address the concerns. If you can, you may not be in a position, you might be the HR person doing this and you're just not in the position to address the concerns. But if there is something that an employee brings up that is an issue and you know the answer to it, acknowledge them at a minimum. And then if you do have solutions, discuss possible solutions right there on the spot and then follow up with that in writing. Remember, stay interviews are awkward and sometimes confusing. Confusing. So if you cannot address the concerns or possible solutions, make a commitment to them to get back to them at X time or date and make sure that you actually do that. Number eight, identify opportunities for company improvement. So ask your employees, hey, what can we as a company be doing better to increase employee engagement and increase satisfaction and then listen and write it down. No idea is a stupid idea. 
Number nine, after your stay interviews, follow up with the employee or employees that participate in. Provide them with the summary of what you talked about. And if there was any, any action items that either one of you had to follow up with, make sure you write that down and give deadlines or decide and agreed upon deadlines. And then finally, number 10, evaluate and refine. Periodically review the effectiveness of your stay interview process. Is Are you the right person to be doing this interview? Should it be an external consultant or somebody else on the team? Incorporate the feedback with your participants into maybe uh, company-wide or department-wide surveys, and then adjust your approach as needed. This will ensure that your stay interviews continue to deliver valuable insights and support employee retention. Thanks for joining me, Wendy Sellers, the HR lady.